Hi, everyone. I want to introduce myself. I'm Gail Stocks. I'm a home modification consultant for Easy Way to Stay and instructor for the National Association of Home Builders Certified Aging in Place and Universal Design Courses. I'm going to be talking to you today about how to make your home home fit. One way to make a home more livable for people of all ages is to incorporate design principles and products that are adaptable, safe, and easy to use. Such smartly designed features are attractive, stylish, and come at many price points. This AARP Home Fit Workshop will show you how that's possible. Before we get to all of that good stuff, please take a moment to locate the chat icon along the bottom of your screen. You'll be able to use the chat function to share comments and feedback to specific questions that will be asked as part of this presentation. You can use this feature to ask a question anytime during the presentation today, and I'll address them at the end. If you have any IT issues or questions, you can direct those in the chat to tech support. We encourage you to share your feedback from today's event to help us make our virtual programming even more valuable and relevant in the future. Welcome. AARP created this workshop because we're committed to helping you make your home a comfortable, safe, and great fit for you, for all older adults, people of all ages, and people of all abilities. In this session, we're gonna cover a lot of ground. You'll learn about the perks of making your home fit, universal design, how to create space that's usable for all people, the different areas of the home, the exterior doors, entry spaces, kitchens, bathrooms, and living spaces, and home modifications that are quick fixes and others that are harder to do. Please take note of the items that have a green star next to them. This is a visual indicator that those items are considered a quick fix. The following materials were sent in the event confirmation email you've received, and you may wanna take notes on them as we go on or afterwards. One is the Home Fit Guide, a complete overview of the information highlighted in this presentation and details about each concept we will cover as well as many others. The Home Fit Worksheets Collection, a list of Home Fit resources for you to use. Home Fit in the Bathroom Additional Considerations, which is additional information about modifying your bathroom. And Home Fit Your Home, assistance with planning your own home fit changes. Imagine if a home could be suitable for any resident of any age or physical ability, allowing older adults who want to live independently despite changing abilities or evolving needs to do just that. The AARP Home Fit Guide and Presentation were created to help people live safely and comfortably in their homes by enabling where they live to be a lifelong home, suitable for themselves and others in their household, no matter a person's age or life stage. Aging, versus, aging in place versus a lifelong home. Two different terms, same meaning. By the end of the presentation today, you should be able to recognize how a home can be modified to support changing needs and lifestyle at any age, determine which modifications are important for maintaining the lifestyle you desire, as well as distinguish between modifications that are do-it-yourself, and by yourself, I mean you, your kids, your kids-in-law, hey, if they're gonna complain about it, let them fix it, or those that are best left to a professional. We can help individuals and families make their current or future residents age-friendly. In addition, elected officials, policymakers, and local leaders can learn about and advocate for the types of housing features and designs that communities need so their residents can live safely, comfortably, and thrive. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word home? Please take a moment or two and share your response using the chat. We're gonna come back to that in just a moment. I'm gonna give you a few minutes to type that in. For many of us, it's the personal touches that we make that change a house into a sweet home. It's also the memories, the feel of comfort, family photos, good times, a place to feel calm and secure. It's understandable then why so many of us wish to stay in our homes as we age. Christine, could you tell me what people shared, please? Absolutely. So we have a few coming in right now. We have family. Joan says comfort. Ellis says safety, and Andrea's is a place that has familiar stuff. Thank you everybody for sharing that. That's absolutely the basis for everything we're gonna be talking about this evening. Remember that many modifications in this presentation have been labeled as a quick fix, which will allow you to begin planning your own home modifications. A complete listing of these classifications can be found on pages 32 to 33 of your home fit guide. Think about these things that you're seeing as this, uh, as this seminar goes on, which have been things that me or have been on my or my family's to-do list. What quick fixes might I actually be able to commit to doing in the coming weeks? And what's keeping me from doing the things I saw today or that are on my family's to-do list? 
So think about these as this presentation goes on. If you're concerned about home maintenance, please be sure to take a look at the Here to Stay guide available for free through the AARP Foundation. The modifications that we present today will vary in cost and difficulty level, but it's helpful to consider other costs as well. Private duty home health aides can be around $5,000. Adult daycare outside of the home can also be quite costly. Assisted living facilities can be upwards of $6,500. A semi-private room in a nursing home can be around $11,000. And a nursing home private room uh, can be even more than that. We think you will see that many of these changes being recommended by HomeFit are much more economical and the work done to remain in your home can be well worth the effort. Let's talk about universal design. Universal design may sound technical, but it refers to a simple concept. Universal design is an approach to designing buildings, products, and environments to make them accessible and usable to and accommodate all people, regardless of age or ability, including those with physical, cognitive, or sensory impairments. To the greatest extent possible, this is also a barrier-free concept. It, along with livability and visitability, is the basis for the Home Fit Guide and our conversations today. When thinking about how to modify your home, think about additions that could accommodate all people regardless of their ability. Making modifications that are low maintenance and energy efficient can improve the livability of a home. Making modifications so that anyone who uses a wheelchair or other mobility devices can visit, improve the visitability of a home. These include at least one zero step entrance, wider doorways, and at least half a bath on the main floor. Remember, homes that are universally designed can be used by all people for a lifetime, even if they have trouble with stairs, even if it's a toddler in a stroller, even if it's an ant with a walker, everyone can live and visit safely and comfortably. Using the chat function, please tell us what you think of when you see this image. We're gonna uh, read everybody's responses in just a moment. Think about how does the design of this space create access issues? Many of us don't give inaccessible spaces a second thought until we or those around us are unable to access an area. This experience can be frustrating, but avoidable. During this presentation, imagine yourself or someone you're caring for or those visiting you moving through your home with a temporary or permanent disability, mobility issues, sensory issues, cognitive issues, using an assistive device such as a walker, a cane, or a wheelchair. Think about the kinds of modifications that would need to be made to ensure that you, your loved ones, and your visitors are able to access your entire home. Christine, can you tell me if anybody had any thoughts about this image? Oh, there's definitely some thoughts. Uh, and we're all pretty much thinking the same. Michelle says, no way. Joan says, stairs. Brenda, inaccessible. We've got uh, not ADA accessible, too many steps, need a large ranch. And then Andrea actually says, I grew up in a house like this in the hills of Oakland, California. Wow. I bet she's very strong now because of it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for sharing your thoughts. Clearly, this is a formidable uh, house for anybody to approach. Whether a residence is a house or an apartment, its exterior doorways should allow a smooth transition into and out of the property. Many homes have entrance steps, which can make the home inaccessible to a person who uses a wheelchair. Maybe not as bad as that previous slide, but it may feel that way to somebody. If somebody relies on crutches or has difficulty climbing stairs, anything could be formidable. The best adjustment to an entryway is the creation of a zero step entrance. Zero step entrances are accessible to all people, whereas raised entryways and steps may be a challenge for those with mobility limitations. Ideally, a home should have at least one zero step entrance. It's important to keep in mind that a zero step entrance does not have to be created at the front door. It can be a side door, garage door, really anywhere that, um, that would work for the client. They can also be created with landscaping by adding sloping pathways. Using landscape to create a zero step entrance needs to be done by a professional architect, uh, landscape architect. Keep in mind that you'll have to determine whether or not it's practical to create a zero step entrance because of the particular landscaping and size of the yard. Consult a contractor or an occupational therapist also to discuss your options. When a zero step entryway cannot be achieved, there are ways to make steps safer for everyone. Steps can be individual, such as a stoop or a set of steps leading to an entryway. Steps need to be well lit, free of obstacles and have railings on both sides. The railings should extend past the last step to ensure a safe transition for all people. Additionally, where space allows, steps can be adapted into walker steps, which have deep treads and short risers. Walker steps are generally 22 inches deep 
and four inches high. And this design allows those who use a cane or a walker to easily and safely utilize steps and can be a good alternative to ramps, which we'll discuss in the coming slide. When a zero step entryway cannot be achieved, a ramp can be added. Ramps can be permanently or temporarily added to a house. Permanent ramps can be added to entrances by a contractor or other durable medical equipment professional, while temporary ramps are a good solution for renters, for visitors, and for those who do not wish to permanently modify their homes. If you have a relatively short step up to your entryway to overcome, you can also consider a threshold ramp, which is an inexpensive and easier to install solution. The formula for ramping is one foot of ramp is needed for every inch of elevation. So for example, 12 inches of elevation at your doorstep equals 12 feet of ramp in front of your house. Switchbacks, which are a turn in the ramp, it's an 180 degree change in direction along the accessible route. Um, that's helpful and may be required when the available space cannot accommodate the length of the ramp and when the ramp length would exceed 15 feet. Therefore, even if a piece of property could accommodate a 20 foot ramp, there may need to be switchbacks. Also keep in mind that a home ramp doesn't need to be at the front door. It can lead to any suitable door, including one inside a garage, which provides the bonus of protection from inclement weather. There are many considerations when incorporating a ramp into the entrance, so it's best to consult with a professional for this. And ramps are discussed in detail on page 28 of your home fit guide. If you have a small front yard or limited outdoor space, you may not think that there's a way to modify your home so that all people can access it. However, a vertical platform lift is another option for those with limited space or options. A vertical platform lift could also be used in the garage, even for a relatively short elevation, because it allows for better use of the garage space rather than taking up the entire garage for a ramp, for example, and protection from inclement weather. A vertical platform lift has a call send control, a manual hand crank for lowering it in an emergency when there's no power, a removable stay dry platform canopy, and a cold weather package. Vertical platform lifts should be installed by a licensed elevator professional. This is a quick reminder to take note of the green stars that you see there on that slide and the slides that follow. And those are indicators that these labeled items are quick fixes, which we're gonna review and ask you about at the end. You'll be asked to choose two of these quick fixes to place on your to-do list to help you get started making your home home fit. Now that we've covered the various ways to modify the exterior access for safety, let's talk about lighting. Outdoor lighting is a must for safety reasons. You'll want to make sure at least one entryway light is at a height that does not require someone to be on a ladder to change the bulb or make maintenance doable by anyone. We recommend redundancy of having two bulbs whenever possible. You should also consider adding pathway lighting, uh, solar powered that leads to the front entryway that will allow visitors and delivery people to safely approach the home after dark. And this is a quick fix. Finally, prominently displaying your address numbers helps delivery people and first responders find your home. Illuminated numbers or numbers made of shiny, reflective, or glow-in-the-dark material are the most visible at night. And again, this is a quick fix. Let's move on to discuss entryways. Whether a residence is a house or an apartment, its exterior doors should allow a smooth transition into and out of the property. Safety is of the utmost importance, and the last thing anybody wants is to fall. You could even consider adding an attractive grab bar at each of your entrances, and you'd be surprised how many people will use it. When planning accessible entryways, the most important consideration is size. Specifically, the width of a doorway opening should be at least 32 inches to allow for a wheelchair to pass through and a height of at least 80 inches. When possible, door thresholds should be less than three quarters of an inch. If they are not, use the suggestions presented earlier in this presentation and on page 28 to 29 of the Home Fit Guide for modifications and should be beveled when possible to allow for ease of navigation. When the measurement is just an inch or two too small, swing clear hinges can provide the needed space. These hinges actually make the door opening as wide as possible by swinging the door completely clear of the opening. To see how such hinges work, search online for swing clear wide throw or offset hinges. If a door doesn't have a glass panel and there isn't a window nearby, a peephole can help residents see who's outside before opening a door old fashioned things could still work. A video doorbell can often be paired with a smartphone app, enabling a door to be answered remotely and a visitor identified whether or not anyone is home. A lever style door hand handle is easier to use than a doorknob or a thumb latch handle for those with mobility concerns or those with full hands. Also a doorknob lock isn't the best choice for an exterior door. 
the lock can too easily and unintentionally be pressed or turned, resulting in someone being accidentally locked out of a home. A higher tech solution for an entryway is a digital door lock. It eliminates having to find or fumble for a door key. A battery powered or hardwired digital door lock can be opened by using a code or a fingerprint. Some devices also work with a key while others provide a way to lock and unlock a door via a smartphone app or remote control. You can even baby proof the lever handle covers and that works in a similar fashion. The cover fits over the door handle and can be secured with adhesive tape. And if you require a sturdier solution, there are screws that can be used to attach that as well. Not every home has a large formal foyer, but most have, homes have some sort of transition area just inside the entryway. That space should be free of clutter and provide storage for things carried or worn. Natural light and open spaces also prevent trips and falls and allow occupants ease of movement into the space. Choosing the correct furniture for your space is an important part of modifying your entry space. You can consider equipping the space with a slim desk, table, or even the wall-mounted shelving to store car keys, wallets, shopping totes, and other commonly used items in an easy to access location. Also consider adding storage containers to organize mail, coupons, and devices, such as phones, garage door openers, things like that. And these are quick fixes. Adding a bench to the space provides a location to put on and remove shoes safely. Shoe and slipper storage, either under the bench or located elsewhere, helps to prevent trips and falls, keeps a foyer free of dirt and puddles, and keeps the space looking tidy. And again, this is a quick fix. Finally, if there's no closet in the foyer of your home, consider adding wall hooks for coats, hats, and purses. Regardless of how many rooms a home has, residents and guests tend to congregate in the kitchen. Well, they did back in the day, and I'm sure that will happen again. But even the most welcoming kitchen has its hazards. Fires, spills, slips, trips, and drops can cause injuries and home damage. Home fitting interventions can make the kitchen safer and easier to use for every diner, visitor, and cook. Since your desire and need to cook may change throughout your lifetime, Consider ways that you could change the way that certain kitchen features work for you. For example, standing at the counter to prepare food may be too taxing. Instead, you might want to move the kitchen table um, or use lower counter spaces. Pull-out counter extensions and other off-the-shelf options are also available to integrate with your countertops. Modifying your current spaces so you don't have to redo the entire kitchen is a cost-effective way to extend the lifespan of your kitchen design. Start by making some simple modifications for safety and ease of use, and eventually, if you're considering a remodel, there are many options for changing the layout and design of your kitchen that can extend its useful lifespan. If you're going to update your kitchen, consider the universal design concepts that will allow for the greatest kitchen access as you age. There are many things to consider when making a kitchen accessible, and those range from quicker fixes to harder remodels that require a professional's help. Some quicker fixes for the kitchen include reorienting adjustable lighting and adding stick on under cabinet lighting to shine more light on commonly used workspaces. Modifications that require the help of a professional include cabinet changes, since frequently used items are best stored between hip and shoulder height, adding lower level cabinets with pull out shelves and extra shelving for storage items of different heights makes them easier for people to access. Other professional renovations could include open shelving, making items easier to see, reach, and replace after use, and adding in drawers of various depths, maximizing the space and storage of various items. Handles and hardware can be relatively easy to modify, but may require the help of a professional in some instances. First, consider the handles of your existing cabinets. D-shaped handles and drawer pulls, like the ones pictured, are easier to grasp than knobs. Lever-style light touch or sensor faucets are both easier to use and more sanitary than those with turnstile knobs or handles. When considering appliances, there are many options with helpful features to choose from. There are also a few features to be mindful of when considering safety and convenience. So please type in what you see, uh, or if you have suggestions for things that you think would be useful that you don't see, please type suggestions and then you just add in your own of what you might like to see. So either something in here that you see that makes accessibility good, or something that you'd like to see. We'll go over those after I'm through with this slide. Although placing the microwave above the oven may be a space saver, it can actually be dangerous. Lifting and lowering heavy and often hot cookware is difficult and can result in spills or injuries. A countertop microwave oven or a built-in one at a height that's safer and easier to access is an option. 
When thinking about stoves, consider those models that have the controls at the front of the unit to save users from having to reach over hot burners and pots. If your existing stove has the controls in the back of the unit, be vigilant about safety. Watch out for loose fitting clothing and exposed skin. Also colored or backlit controls on a stove are the easiest to read and controls that can be locked, covered or removed are useful if children live in or visit the home. The top oven and a double oven range can be used to prepare small meals and the height is helpful if bending and lifting is difficult. Consider a separate cooktop, which a seated user could use, then oven separated also at a height a seated user could access with side hinge openings. Think about drawer, drawer style appliances, such as the pictured refrigerator, range, and double drawer dish, dishwasher. These are more expensive than single door swing open models. However, the ease of use and energy saving can be worth the cost. Also microwave drawers. A French door refrigerator opens in the middle, which makes it easy to see and reach what's inside. Pull out drawers and shelves. Pull down shelves, Lady, Lazy Susans are all things you can consider. And you can find more suggestions on modification to lighting, flooring, and more in the home fit guide on pages eight to 10. Christine, could you tell me if anybody saw anything here that they thought was a, a, a good home fit suggestion or something that they would suggest? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we have a comment from Michelle that an area with a lower counter and wheelchair access would be a great option. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a comment from Amy that the microwave could be in a drawer instead. Mm -hmm. We have controls on the oven on the front is good, better than on the back. And I think that's it for now. Yes. Okay. And terrific. Thank you everybody for your contributions. Another area of the house that merits additional consideration when thinking about making your home home fit is the bathroom. Consider safety and comfort first, aesthetics later. Water on the bathroom floor is a slipping hazard and often an invisible one. Falling in a bathroom is painful and potentially life-threatening because of the many hard surfaces, the floor, the toilet, the countertop, the tub. All things considered, you may be surprised just how nice many modern bathroom safety and convenience features look in your existing space. When considering making changes to your bathroom, remember to keep in mind ease of use and safety. It's a good idea to go over each component of the bathroom as you decide which tips you will incorporate into your bathroom. In the shower area, there are many options available when someone has mobility limitations, and many of these options are temporary and very cost-effective. A permanent shower bench or portable transfer chair or shower seat can be very useful for safety and convenience. Additionally, an adjustable height handheld shower head makes the shower customizable for users of different heights and abilities. A wide doorless shower with a zero step entry is accessible for all, including wheelchair users and others with a disability or anyone who needs another person's assistance. This requires the assistance of a profess professional. Zero step shower inserts are available also from big box stores. Consider full swing shower doors or the use of a shower curtain or a partial wall to cover the openings. Now let's talk about the toilet. A comfort height toilet is the best option for wheelchair users, but not necessarily for someone who is short in stature at, or for children. If there's a household where one person could greatly benefit from the comfort height toilet and one person for whom the comfort height toilet would be detrimental, consider if there's more than one bathroom available to have each one used by the appropriate user. If you need to add height to an existing toilet, consider a toilet base riser. A toilet base riser is a base added to the existing toilet that adds three and a half inches in height to that toilet. These usually cost less than $100. An example is pictured here. See the base of the toilet featured on that slide. Finally, a commode chair is the least expensive option for helping someone get on and off the toilet. They are often used by people for temporary situations or when remodeling is not an option. This device sits right on top of the toilet, raises the height of the toilet, and provides arm support without needing any structural changes at all. And these are often available for under $50. Also, you can consider bidet seats or washlets also available at all big, big box stores. If you're still using a tub, there are slide-in tubs, step-in tubs, as well as Hoyer lifts for tubs, as well as this, this less expensive option, a tub transfer bench. And don't forget to refer to the handout entitled The Bathroom, Additional Considerations for more suggestions on safety and convenience for modifications for the bathroom. Anything could be a grab bar. We've all experienced sliding on a wet, slippery floor. And that's why we want to ensure that the bathroom includes a grab bar or assist bar 
for someone to hold on to when they feel unstable. There are now many readily available high quality grab bars that are integrated into common bathroom features such as toilet paper roll holders, soap dishes, such as the ones being shown here. The correct installation of grab bars or assist bars is vitally important for safety. They should be installed into supportive blocking, which is best done by a professional. If they are not secured correctly, they can pull away from the wall when someone puts their full weight on them. Keep in mind that there are unsafe products sold as grab or assist bars. Never use clamp or suction cup grab bars. Research has indicated that grab or assist bars are safest when they're horizontal to the floor rather than vertical or at a diagonal. But always consult an occupational therapist to ensure that it's placed correctly for your individual needs. Be sure to refer to your home fit guide for more information on safety modifications for the bathroom on pages 22 to 23. Finally, let's turn our attention to other areas of the home. Universal design for living spaces focuses on safety and livability, but also visitability. Having guests in our home sometimes brings to light the quick fixes and harder to do's that we may need to ensure our living space is usable by all people. Think about a time that you had a lot of family over to your house. Everyone is gathered in the living room, depending on how your space is set up. There may be things that you'd need to watch out for. Small children may knock into the edges of furniture, trip over electrical cords, or pull on draperies or window blinds. Family with mobility issues might not fit between the couch and the coffee table, or they may not be able to get out of a low chair. Those are the kinds of things we'll discuss in the next slide, and you could read more on pages 12 to 15 of the Home Fit Guide. Think of a situ the situation we described in the previous slide, then think of your own home. And what would you need to change to ensure your safety and the safety of all your guests? A few common fixes are always anchoring tall furnishings to the wall to prevent tipping, securing exposed cords to the floor by using an electrical cord approved adhesive or covering, checking the cord regularly to ensure that there's no fraying or breakage, and this is a quick fix, providing about two feet of clear space between a coffee table or ottoman and the couch so people can have room to maneuver while sitting down or getting up, and avoiding furniture with sharp corners and always securing window treatment cords to prevent entanglement, and securing area rugs to the floor with non-slip mats or double-sided tape, and this is a quick fix. These changes are good for everyone, not just visitors when made throughout your home. Now let's talk about the lighting and electrical in the living spaces. Most of these changes, but not all, would need to be completed by a professional. One easier thing to do is to use natural lighting during the day by opening blinds and curtains to brighten the room. Another quick fix is using a plug-in night light or motion sensor light in unused outlets throughout the home. Battery operated dusk to dawn or motion sensor night lights in the hallways and near steps and staircases are also simple safe solutions and are quick fixes. Additionally, you may want to consider some additional improvements that generally require professional assistance. The ideal height for switches is roughly three to four feet from the floor. Rocker style uh, switches, which are pictured here, make turning lights on and off very easy. Also consider switches near the doorway of living spaces that turn on a single ceiling fixture so that occupants do not need to enter darkened rooms. Stairway and hallway lights need to have an on-off switches at both ends in the hall and at the top and the bottom of the stairs. Light switches that glow in the dark are especially helpful in those areas. Consider hanging wall sconce light fixtures with an adjustable arm next to each side of the bed for a reading light at night. Even pre-COVID, dining areas weren't always traditional formal spaces they used to be. There was a time when most meals were served and eaten in a kitchen or a dining room table. Nowadays, both quick bites and full meals are often eaten on the go or at a kitchen island or in front of a television or a computer. As a result, many rooms are now dining areas. If you have traditional formal dining rooms in your home and it's no, no longer being used, you can repurpose that room into a main level bedroom, craft area, reading nook, or into any type of bonus room that your home might need. Wherever you dine, consider comfort and utility. Dining table chairs with armrests provide support to get up into and out of the seat. When a kitchen island or countertop serves as a spot for eating, select seating that's sturdy and safe to use. Choose models that are an appropriate height with seat backs, armrests, and widely spaced legs. When using the living room to dine, dine, use lightweight serving trays to transport plates, drinks, and utensils instead of carrying each item by hand. Trays are available for attaching to a walker or a wheelchair. When placing furniture in a hallway, maintain at least 36 inches of passing space so that people can use the corridor without knocking into or being blocked by the furnishings. 
Stairways need to be well lit and have handrails on both sides, which allows someone to use his or her cane effectively going both up and down the stairs. One easy quick fix idea is to install motion sensor night lights. The safest surface and coverings for steps is a tightly woven low pile carpet with thin padding. Using contrast colors or patterns to help differentiate each step from the next tread or the next step. Secure carpet runners with permanent, tra permanent tacking. If stairs are uncarpeted, always make sure that they have a non-slip surface such as adhesive strips or a securely placed rubber tread. These are quick fixes. Stairs with an open back should have riser covers installed for safety. And as mentioned earlier, handrails should extend past the bottom step for safety. When single story living is needed but not possible, a stair chairlift can be a practical and safe mobi mobility solution. Stair chairlifts should be installed by a professional. Stair chairlifts aren't inexpensive, but they can be a better and more affordable choice than relocating. And you may be surprised to find out that about all the options that are available for various types of staircases. The cost will increase if you require a custom chair lift or if your stairs are curved. Remember that stair chairlifts may be available from some vendors more affordably by being rented or purchased used. The best location for a laundry room or area is near the rooms where you get dressed. However, in most homes, especially older ones, that's not possible. If access is an issue, Laundry facilities can be moved to the main floor, a stairlift can be installed, or one can invest in a laundry service. Quick fixes for the laundry space include investing in a laundry basket with wheels, such as shown in this illustration, or using a folding shopping cart. These items are also ideally suited for an apartment or condo building or where laundry machines are located outside the home. When purchasing a new washer or dryer, consider the style options and door placement, top or front, which will be easiest for you. Stacked units, save space, but can be difficult for some users to reach. If bending or loading an empty or front load washer or dryer is difficult, the units can be placed on a platform. The models sold by appliance manufacturers often include storage drawers. Also consider washer dryer combinations in a single washer sized unit containing a front loading washer as well as a condenser dryer. Consult an appliance specialist about the best options for you. Of the things I heard in this presentation today, this is what I want you to share with me now. One, which has been on my or my family's to-do list? Two, what quick fixes might I actually commit to doing in the coming weeks? And three, what's keeping me from doing the things I saw today or that are on my family's to-do list? So please share with me, type in the number one, two, or three, and write down one thing that you think pertains to you. So one thing that we spoke about today that has been on your family's to-do list, Two, what kind of quick fix you might actually commit to doing in the very near weeks? And three, what actually might be keeping you from doing anything you saw today? So while you're typing that in, I just wanna mention that there are some additional resources for you to continue your learning. AARP has a wealth of information and resources for residents and community leaders alike. Visit aarp.org slash livable communities for more information. And to revisit information specifically about HomeFit and our presentation today, visit aarp.org slash homefit. AARP has created an app for iPhones and iPads called HomeFit AR. The app uses image recognition to identify design elements and appliances like refrigerators, sinks, and stairs and employs augmented reality to provide additional information with specific to-dos or fixes to make a home more comfortable and safe. It's available on the Apple App Store. So now I'd like to see what feedback anybody has given, if any for items one, two, or three? Yes, we have several people chiming in on this one. Uh, so Michelle says for number one, getting rid of some obstacles on the floor, blaming them on my dog. <laughs> it's been <laughs> something that she's uh, she's been using as a tactic. <laughs> um, we have someone telling us I'm a fit for all three. Julie says, need to look into uh, an option for a stairless entryway. Mm. Ellis is sharing under number one, a bathroom remodel has been on the priority list with a walk-in shower and installing handrails and a seat or chair in the shower as well. Um, and that, you know, sometimes it's starting projects, right? But then it's, you know, finances 
or finding um, qualified folks to do the work can be an issue. Sure, absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody. Sounds like everybody, a lot of people have a plan, came up with some ideas of things that uh, that we brought up that they've even been either been thinking about or maybe are newly thinking about. And uh, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot to a lot to consider, including getting the right people to do the work and, and making sure that it's affordable. And none of that can be taken for granted. It's all that that's something that needs to be think, thought about. But there are some things that are quick fixes, just Straightening up, decluttering, certainly one of the safest things. Lighting, uh, those are either getting reflective numbers for your house. There are a lot of things that uh, that you could do yourself. You can order them online and, and get started with that in the next week or two. If you're concerned about home maintenance, please be sure to look at the Here to Stay guide available for th free through the AARP Foundation. You can take a self-assessment and search a directory for free and low-cost programs and services near you. You can also get tips, checklists, worksheets, and more to help you plan, prioritize, and keep your home maintenance routine on track. And OTs and Certified Aging in Place Specialist, CAPS professionals, can also be very helpful resources. These professionals understand various needs that can accompany aging and can help you find solutions. Additional professionals that may be of assistance include remodelers, builders, architects, landscape architects, durable medical equipment vendors, all the uh, professionals you've heard me reference so far. I hope you enjoyed today's session and learning about the perks of staying in your home, universal design, and the home tour, making your home home fit. We hope you enjoy your copies of the Home Fit Guide, a complete overview of the information highlighted in this presentation and details about each concept covered, as well as the Home Fit Worksheet Collection, a list of Home Fit resources for you to use, Home Fit the Bathroom, additional considerations, additional information for modifying your bathroom, and home fit your home, assistance with planning your own home fit changes. I'd like to let you know how AARP is working to protect Americans 50 plus by making sure you have the latest information you need about the COVID-19 vaccines and the distribution plans in New Jersey. Find out who's eligible for the vaccine and the boosters, when and where vaccines will be available, and what you need to discuss with your doctor before you decide. Just visit our website and get the most up-to-date information available about your vaccine options. Learn more about the COVID-19 vaccine availability and distribution in New Jersey at the site listed on this um, slide, aarp.org slash ngvaccine, or call New Jersey's toll-free hotline at 855-568-0545 from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. AARP New Jersey also provides lots of opportunities to connect with your community and one another without leaving home. To try virtual offerings like healthy cooking classes, yoga, brain health workshops, or to learn how to protect yourself from fraud and scams through the AARP Fraud Watch Network virtual offerings, please visit aarp.org nj to see all our upcoming virtual events and offerings. And thank you for joining us. And now we have some time to address any questions and answers that might've come in during the presentation. Please feel free to also type any now. And as a final reminder, you will be receiving a follow-up email after the event with a link to a brief survey and links to resources referenced in today's discussion. Please take a moment to provide us with your feedback in the survey so we can continue to bring you relevant and timely virtual offerings like these. And thank you again for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you at future AARP New Jersey virtual offerings. Uh, were there any questions anybody put in um, earlier or at this point? Yes. Uh, we do have several questions and we also just feel have a lot of folks saying thank you that this was very informative. Um, thanks so much for for this presentation tonight. Um, and one question we have I can answer, which is how can we review this information or this program again. Uh, so as Gail mentioned, you will receive a follow up email with all of the resources that were reviewed and discussed tonight. In addition, we are recording tonight's presentation and it will be available on both our ARP New Jersey page um, and probably the easiest way to locate that will be following our Facebook page. So it's just ARP New Jersey on Facebook. Uh, we will have the link posted there as well. Uh, in terms of questions, so we have a question from Phil who is asking, is it possible to childproof the lever, the lever handles, uh, especially when grandkids come to visit. 
Funny you should ask. Yes, I just looked that up today and it is. Um, I didn't have any special information on that, but I, I did just Google it and, uh, and that information is available. It is out there. So I'm happy to say, because I know so many of us are Put, put other people before ourselves and would be so much more concerned about the safety of our grandchildren than we might be for ourselves. But it's great to not have to make that decision and to get a lever handle uh, that something could be attached to to child proof. So absolutely, that's out there. Wonderful. Um, Michelle asked, could you explain the difference? You talked about occupational therapists and physical therapists, so OTs and PTs. Can you explain the difference between those? Sure, sure. The occupational therapists are going to be much more involved with your functional daily life skills. We call them instrumental activities of daily living. So your ability, you might not be working professionally, but you're doing some kind of occupation. There's something you're doing around the house. There's a hobby. There's something that has meaning for your life. And you want to make sure that there are no uh, environmental obstacles that are getting in your way. So an occupational therapist would work with you to make sure that you're able to um, carry out these things that are meaningful in your life, whatever that means for you. Whereas a physical therapist, if what was getting in your way was the fact that your legs weren't strong enough, your balance wasn't good enough, uh, they'd be working more on those concrete functions for yourself. Perfect. And then our last question that we have is from Larry. Larry asked, are there designers that specialize in universal design? Uh, yeah, there absolutely are. And um, one of the references that we had here through the National Association of Home Builders, uh, you can go to their website, you can look in your area, and you could put, look in the profession that you're looking at. And there are um, many people who are CAP certified, certified aging in place specialists. So those people have taken special designs and courses and making sure that they know about universal design and aging in place. So those could be kitchen and bath designers, those can be interior designers, as well as occupational therapists, contractors, uh, handymen, realtors, and the such. Great, thank you. And again, just, uh, you know, you're very popular. We've got folks asking when's your next session. <laughs> uh, so just as a reminder, again, all of this information will be sent in a follow-up email, all of the resources. And once we have a uh, final copy of the reporting, ARP New Jersey will be posting that on our Facebook page as well as, well as our um, web page as well. Let me just take one more check of the chat and see if we missed anything. Um, there is a question here, Gail. I'm not sure um, if you'll be you'll be able to answer this. Um, so, what is fire code law about the commercial door closure and the pressure? I have common halls, and they just say it must be now because of fire code. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. That's yeah, there, there's ADA compliance sets for commercial buildings. So any buildings that have more than three residences, so that's going to um, be following uh, ADA compliance. So if you could look that up um, under ADA uh, accessibility, consult, you know, getting that information. What we're talking here is about residential homes of uh, three or less. So the, the rules, the, um, the ordinances are going to be different. We're, we're looking to um, local state and local codes when you're just talking about individual residences, but um, those are those are codes, uh, the ADA compliant codes that your uh, building needs to follow. Great. And a follow up question, would a, would a person's caseworker be able to help with that? And my uh, that would be, yes, that's the person I would suggest reaching out sure. to. Geriatric case managers are wonderful um, tools. They have wonderful tools. They have a lot of a wealth of knowledge that they can help people with for sure. Wonderful. And I believe, those are all of our questions. Yes, those are all of our questions in the chat this evening. Okay, great. All right. So with that, we're going to close out. Thank you all so much for joining us and have a good night. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.